just watched the reveal of the 2020 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. The base price is gonna be less than $60,000. That's incredible. This is the eighth generation Corvette, and of course now it's mid-engine. There is a 6.2 liter V8 right about here. Now, that's a big deal for a lot of reasons. Well, one, it's the first time that a Corvette's gone mid-engine. Uh, two, it brings a ton of performance benefits and it makes a pretty radical change to what Corvette is. Really quick, that engine is still a push rod V8. That means it's low, it's sacrificing a little bit of valve train sophistication for sitting low in the car itself. It's attached to an eight-speed dual clutch automatic transmission, the only transmission offering, and of course, it drives the rear wheels. Now, it makes 495 horsepower with the performance exhaust and all that with launch control and with the performance options like the Z51 track package that was on the C7 and so on, enables zero to 60 in less than three seconds, which is pretty spectacular. Now, one of the things that happens when you switch to a mid-engine configuration is you, of course, all that space that was once cargo volume is now engine volume, I guess, but there's still a trunk behind it, which Chevy says can fit two golf bags, which is pretty impressive. It shows Chevy's commitment to understanding the practicality aspect of the Corvette and why owners really appreciate that. It makes this car more usable for more people. On top of that, there's also a front trunk or frunk up front combined. Both of those compartments make 12.6-ish cubic feet of cargo space, which is pretty important. Let's go a little bit further up. One of the things they maintained was the removable roof, which has always been a highlight of Corvettes. It's nice to be able to take the roof off and just go for a cruise. There are a couple other big dramatic changes to the rest of the car as well. Gone are the transverse leaf spring setup that used to underpin Corvette for, you know, a long time. Now we're just down to coilovers, which is more traditional and should make for a really sophisticated ride and handling, especially when paired with the magnetic fluid filled shocks that Corvettes have been using in recent years and those we've really liked a lot. Chevy says in the press materials that the Corvette equipped with all season tires can generate one G laterally. That's ridiculous for all season tires and that's such a high amount of grip capability that actually all Corvettes now will have a dry sump oiling system to ensure constant lubrication to important engine bits when you're cornering really hard. A lot of really exciting stuff in there. But let's move our way to the front. One of the real advantages beyond you know all the performance headroom of padding the engine in the middle because it's putting more mass on the rear tires, giving them more traction to brake, accelerate, and handle. But you also move the passenger compartment quite a bit forward in the cabin. And that means you can put the hood down lower because there's no longer an engine there. You can make the windshield bigger, that gives you a better sight line. And because there's no longer an engine blocking it, you can have a shorter and more direct steering system, which makes the whole thing feel more direct. And it also helps when you're closer to the front wheels too. It makes the process feel a little bit better. Let's find a way to hop inside and talk about what's going on in there. The interior is a pretty dramatic change like the rest of the car, I guess. Two seats, of course, squared off steering wheel, which looks interesting, but in my experience, cars that use this design work pretty well because you have four unique points of contact that help in doing hand over hand steering around tight corners or when you're in a power slide, as I like to do, it helps you locate where the center of the wheel is really quickly. Big digital gauge cluster behind that infotainment display here, all very driver oriented, how it wraps around you, especially this little trim piece of uh, HVAC controls. Very interesting decision. It's gonna be a while before we actually figure out if we like it or not. Uh, but I will say I like having physical buttons rather than digital ones buried in a menu. One of the things we haven't talked about is uh, something that's really impressive. That's a button hidden up here that lifts the front end of the car uh, when you're approaching like a speed bump or your driveway. And the cool thing is when you do that, you can actually have the GPS system remember where that was. Uh, so when you get home, you don't have to always hit that button. Or if there's always a, a speed bump or a pothole on your drive home, the car will just learn that as you use it. And that's a really cool thing to have in a sports car. There's nothing more embarrassing than scraping the nose on your sports car as you leave your driveway in the morning. Very, very embarrassing. There's a lot here that we're gonna have to learn and experience and talk about, but for the time being, this Corvette looks really cool and we can't wait to drive it.